<laughs> superhero movies, the bane of my existence. Just kidding, I love superhero movies, and you probably do too. And don't lie to me, because I have proof. Nowadays, superhero movies are usually either okay or really good. But there have been a lot of superhero movies over the years, and I mean a lot. And a lot of them are not very good. Sometimes they can get downright awful. And since I like superhero movies and really bad movies, I figured it's about time I have an easily replenishable series that I can make a video for when I don't have any other ideas. So in this new series, we are going to watch the lowest rated superhero movies and I'll rank them myself from best to worst and worst to best. By the way, for those of you who don't know, I've been trying to post this video for the past like four days, but Fox wouldn't let me. So I'm gonna be doing some pretty degenerate stuff to the footage. I'd like to thank my buddy Breadsword for coming up with this idea. If you like my content, you'll definitely like his, so go check him out. All right, without further ado, let's check out if Daredevil 2003 is the worst superhero movie ever made. Now this movie's kind of special. It came out during a time that I like to call the post-Spider-Man era. During this time, studios thought people would just watch any superhero movie despite if it's good or not. As I've stated before, the Sam Raimi movies are kind of corny, but it's more charming when Sam Raimi does it. And when these movies do it, it's not charming. Anyway, this movie is also interesting because it's been recently outclassed in every single way by the Daredevil show that came out recently. Now, I'm pretty sure I've said this before at some point, but I think season one of Daredevil is pretty close to perfection. People have asked me to make a video on it before, but I can't really even put into words what I like about it. It just makes me feel so fucking good, man. And part of the reason why I say that is the fact that Daredevil's probably my third favorite superhero. I seriously love him a lot. And for a long time, public perception on him was pretty bad because of this stupid movie. What do you want? Justice. And yeah, he has a lot of cool and nuanced abilities, but if the writers don't use them properly, a lot of people just kind of see Daredevil as, oh, the superhero whose superpower is being blind, haha. -ha. However, that's kind of a problem that this movie encounters. It really doesn't make Matt Murdock seem that cool at all. But I'll get into that later. For now, let's start our edgy superhero opening. They say your whole life flashes before your eyes when you die. And it's true, even for a blind man. Now this movie wants to be cute and creative, so it starts in medias res. AKA the beginning of the movie takes place during the ending of the movie. This is a cool idea when it's done really well, and a really bad idea when it's not done very well. And in this movie, it's the latter. Now there's a bit of disconnect when we see young Matt Murdock being narrated by an older Matt Murdock. When we've already seen him as an adult, all grown up and dressed up as a superhero, we don't really care as much when watching his backstory. In the show, this is actually done really well because we keep flipping back and forth between Kid Matt and Daredevil Matt and helps us frame the story as we watch it unfold. When we see how younger Matt Murdock learns a lesson, it immediately flips back to show us how an older Matt Murdock applies that to his current life. This is the right way to do a flashback. But in this movie, it's just a normal flashback, except it's a really, really long one. In fact, about 90% of the movie is a flashback. I am not joking. Now to bring up the Sam Raimi movies again, imagine if this technique was used in Spider-Man 1. What if the first thing we saw was Peter Parker beaten up after fighting Green Goblin or something? And then he starts his monologue and it's just like, Who am I? You sure you wanna know? Yeah, no. I don't think that would've worked. Oh, and by the way, I should probably bring this up now, but the music in this movie is hilarious. I need you to trust now it gets better later on, so just keep that in the back of your head for now. <laughs> now this is actually a pretty cool representation of how Matt Murdock can see, sort of. But this movie kind of forgets that every one of his senses are enhanced too, including his sense of smell and taste. And this movie only really focuses on his enhanced hearing. I mean, the other senses are kind of fucking important too. I mean, he doesn't have many senses left, so I think we should probably highlight all of them. This movie makes it seem like he has to hit stuff all the time in order to see anything. Like he's some sort of bat or like a weird Dark Souls boss. 
And that's not how it fucking works. This makes him seem so weak. I'm not even mad as a fan of the comics. As I've said many times before, I don't care when movies change stuff from the comic books. I'm only mad because this movie literally tells us that he has this all-encompassing radar sense. And then when the movie just forgets about it, it's like, oh, sorry, my senses don't work. I can't fight. I'm just a blind guy. <laughs> Also, this movie now wants us to believe that Matt Murdock also gained ninja powers from losing his eyesight. And I understand that adding an actual ninja subplot like the show did would be a lot for this movie, but it doesn't make me think that this is any less silly. Also, the idea of Matt still being bullied by kids while being blind is pretty fucked up. Anyway, even though he promised his dad that he wouldn't fight anymore, I guess the movie wants him to have revenge, so go ahead and whack him a few times with your stick, and then knock this guy the fuck out with a cartwheel kick. That guy wasn't even the main bully, what the fuck did he do to deserve that? Oh, and by the way... Hey, it's Stan Lee! So Daredevil's dad dies, and it motivates him to become a superhero, and I'm sure you know this story, so I don't need to explain it any more than that. I would keep my promise. I would help those that others wouldn't. Okay, wait a minute. Your promise to who? Because your promise to your dad was to study and not be a fighter. That's what he wanted. That was his one wish. He wanted you to be a smart guy with a job, like a dentist or something. You weren't fucking listening, were you? Are you blind and deaf? So now Matt's older and he has to sleep in a coffin to block out the sounds of the world. Now I'll be real, I've read a lot of Daredevil comics, and this doesn't seem right to me, but maybe there's some fucking story out there that I don't know about, so I won't rag on it too hard because I don't want somebody to be like, oh, well, in Daredevil of 45, he sleeps in a coffin. Now, when older Matt wakes up, he turns on more licensed edgelord music because he can't stand the sounds of the busy street. Now, hear me out. Wouldn't the music be even louder and harder to handle if he turns it up that loudly? This movie doesn't even know what rules it wants to adhere to. That's fine, I don't care, we can do whatever. I'm just here for a good time. Another weird thing about this movie is how many Easter eggs there are. For instance, they keep bringing up names of people who have worked on Daredevil comics in the past, and the first few are kinda cute. Miller, Mac, Bendis. <laughs> I recognize those names, but then they just keep going and going. For instance, we have a physical Stanley cameo, but then we also have a verbal Stanley cameo when they mention his name later on, because I guess one wasn't enough. And then we have a character named after artist Joe Casada. Casada worked on Daredevil comics, and he also worked for Marvel Comics in general for a really long time. But now he shares a name with an evil mobster slash sexual abuser. Is that uh, Miss Sutton? Miss Sutton enjoyed every minute of it. Jesus Christ! What? Why would you say that when you are on trial? Damn, maybe the city does need some vengeance. Got yeah, work to do. Oh yeah! This is amazing. If you ask me, this Batman and Robin shit is what we need in more modern superhero movies. And it just keeps fucking going too. Like he's alone in his apartment just doing this. So CGI Ben Affleck jumps off a building and I assume he's going to swing off of something or something like that. No, okay, he's just gonna fall 20 stories and live. That's fine, I shouldn't even care. Why aren't his legs broken when he jumps 100 feet into the air? Isn't he a human? So now we get our first fight scene and while the choreography isn't that bad, one thing that's really distracting is the audio. Now, I would assume the movie's trying to warp the audio so we can hear things the way that Matt hears them, but it just doesn't work. Like, listen to how weird this sounds. <laughs> you think the movie about the blind guy would have some cool audio work, but I guess that's asking too much. So Matt is here to punish Joe Quesada, you know, the regular Daredevil M.O., catch the bad guys who evade the law. And as we know, Daredevil usually just makes sure they end up in jail or something. He doesn't really kill them unless he doesn't have a choice. Okay, he uh, he just split a guy in half on the railroad tracks. What the fuck? I mean, I get he was a bad guy, but is that really the kind of role model you wanna be? 
Did they mix up Punisher and Daredevil? I know it's really easy. They look very similar. After he commits murder, he goes into his coffin and sleeps like a baby. And then the next day, he uses his fake blindness to try and get a girlfriend. And at this point, I realize that maybe Matt Murdock is not a good person in this movie. He also literally runs after Jennifer Garner to force her to talk to him. Like, he gets mad that she doesn't want to tell him her name. Is this the hero of the story? Am I watching the right movie? <laughs> Okay, what, what the fuck is going on now? Why does she still think he's blind after this? He's looking right at her. He literally walks up straight to her and acknowledges her without her saying or doing anything. This guy is clearly not blind. He was tricking you. Are you stupid? Yeah, lady, kick that blind guy's ass. Or if you prefer, yeah, blind guy, kick that lady's ass. What is with this fucking music? <laughs> now imagine if this is how we got introduced to Kingpin in the TV show. Now if I'm being honest, I would say there's some pretty interesting colors in this shot. And honestly, I don't like any of them. So next, we get to see Grindelwald as Bullseye, and he's probably my favorite villain since Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. I love when we get villains played by great actors who just don't give a fuck and are clearly having fun with it. In his first scene, he kills a guy who's just kind of rude to him, but he does it with paper clips. And he just has the demeanor of a guy who thinks he's really fucking cool, but he has no idea that people don't give a shit about him. He kills a man and nobody reacts. They don't scream. They just don't care at all. <laughs> I mean, that, that doesn't really even seem possible if you think about it. For some reason, when Bullseye does anything with his coat, we hear... <laughs> rattlesnakes? He's not a cowboy. Why rattlesnakes? He's Irish! This movie also has a bad habit of treating the audience like they're fucking stupid. Like in this scene, a kid watches Matt beat up some bad guy and then he starts crying because... I mean, come on, it's horrifying. But instead of letting us come to our own moral conclusions, we just get Matt Murdock saying this over and over again. I'm not the bad guy, kid. I'm not the bad guy. I'm not. Okay, I got it. Oh, and by the way, John Favreau is in this movie as Foggy Nelson, and honestly, it's very distracting. Only because at this point, I've seen him in so many damn Marvel movies. It's not even really this movie's fault, but it is worth pointing out. Come on, what happens to that lie detector of yours when it detects your own bullshit? Okay, so wait, does John Foggy Rowe know about his powers or not? Because in an earlier scene, he tries to do a very funny prank by getting Matt to pour mustard in his coffee. Aha, good prank, bro. You're such a good friend. But then right after that, Matt just reveals to him that he can smell a hot lady coming from down the street, which, by the way, what the fuck? And it's implied that they do this a lot of the time, so Foggy kind of knows some superpowers that Matt has, but not all of them? The only possible explanation for what's going on here is that Foggy just assumes that all blind people can smell women from across the street, and that this is just normal. I honestly spent a really long time thinking about this, and I'm not proud of that. I guess this version of Matt is just super lax when it comes to his secret identity. He might as well just wear the Christmas sweater that he wore in the comics. Each raindrop makes a sound. Just then, it's like I, it's like I can see again. Okay, and now he's just telling her that he has superpowers. He's not keeping it a secret at all. This guy is one of the worst superheroes I've seen in a long time. And I should also say this now, but while I love Daredevil, I fucking hate his love interests. Elektra just ruins everything that she's in. She drags down his whole character because she has no character herself. She is literally just a hot, dangerous ninja. That is it. If you ask me, there's nothing more boring than a superhero who has another superhero as a romantic partner. For me, it's more compelling to see two people with two completely different lives and abilities growing close to each other. There's nothing I hate more than the character who's like, oh, I believe in justice and doing what's right. But she's dangerous. What do I do? It is so overplayed in superhero comics, and I do not like it. 
Electra sucks in the comics, she sucks in this movie, and she super sucks in the TV show, I don't like her. And the fact that this movie is mostly just Matt and Electra is probably the reason why nobody likes it. So anyway, Matt and Foggy get invited to Kingpin's party for some reason, and then they decide to go to Kingpin's party. Uh, 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 look at that. Wilson Fisk is in the hizzy. Now, Foggy, would you have said that if he was white? because I don't think you would have. So now I guess Kingpin wants to kill Elektra's dad because Elektra's dad was like, oh, I don't really want to work for you and be a bad guy anymore, so I would really appreciate if you'd let me leave. So after the party, Kingpin sends Bullseye to kill him, and after some early 2000s CGI bullshit, Bullseye yoinks one of Matt's ninja sticks and throws it to kill Elektra's dad. And then a motorcycle explodes in front of Elektra's dad, but then in the next shot, there's no explosion or fire or anything and he just dies to the stick. It was like one shot ago. I didn't forget that it happened. Bullseye. <sighs> okay, oh you movie. I can't stay mad at you. So now Elektra is sad because her dad is dead and her and everybody else think Daredevil killed him, which would be much more significant if Matt hadn't already killed people in this movie. And he's like, oh, I'm so mad because I only want everybody to know that I kill people when I actually do kill people. Anyway, it's funeral time. These wounds won't seem to heal. This pain is just too real. Now I know I'm risking it all by having this music in my video at all, but I really need you guys to know that they actually put an Evanescence song in this movie because if I just told you and didn't show you, you wouldn't believe me. And hey, they can't block my video if they can't decide which song to strike me for. That's not true at all. They can still block the video. Don't, don't believe what I just said. Is that Kevin Smith? That'd be good, Kirby. As Jack Kirby? Okay, can we please stop with the names? I read the comics too, guys. Oh my God. They did not. I cannot make this shit up. I did not add this song. It just so happens that this is the funniest superhero soundtrack of all time. <laughs> I really don't know what I love more. The absurd music choices or Colin Farrell chewing the scenery every time we see him. So now Elektra's like, oh no, I can't kill Daredevil. He's so sexy, aha. So she fights Bullseye and this fight has my favorite thing ever. Dutch angles. I am so dizzy that I want to throw up. <laughs> Why did you even try? Oh, thank God she's dead. Again with the snakes? What is it with the snakes? So now we're back at the beginning of the movie, except now we know that Matt is fleeing from helicopters, so it's kind of dumb that he's just sitting on top of a building to hide from them. So now it's final battle time, and Daredevil has to beat up the Jolly Leprechaun. This is the silliest villain that I have seen in a very, very long time. Anyway, so Matt throws him out a fucking window in front of the media because, I don't know, I guess he doesn't care who knows about his murders anymore. Bullseye. After that, it's time to go kill the other main villain, and Matt is not very good at it. In fact, Matt basically loses most of the fights in this movie. He gets his ass beat because, well, he's blind. That's right, guys. Matt has superpowers and he's literally a ninja, but he can't beat normal people. He has to make it rain on Kingpin so that he can see him even a little bit. That doesn't make any sense. Why is Daredevil so weak in this movie? Oh my god, relax. It probably didn't even hurt that bad. Bro, chill. Champion, bro. You champion! So even though Matt just killed the other main villain and plenty of other people in this movie, this time he doesn't kill Kingpin because... I'm not the bad guy. Well, since when has that stopped you? So Daredevil sends Kingpin to jail and he jumps off a building to another edgy song and the movie ends. Now, is this the worst superhero movie ever made? Well, I can't really say for sure yet because I have a lot of movies to go through in this new series, but I will say that this movie is not very good. 
Aside from the hilarious shit, the movie is actually kind of boring. The bad romantic subplot takes up a good chunk of time, and it's hard to enjoy the action scenes because Daredevil just gets beat up and basically loses most of them. I'm actually not going to take many points off for the weird stuff like the music because this movie came out in 2003, so I'm going to give it a pass on that. So overall, I think I'm going to give Daredevil 2003 a pretty generous 4 out of 10. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I've been wanting to do this one for a while now, so I hope you all enjoy it. As usual, this episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons. If you want to become a patron yourself and see your name over there with the rest of the gang, you can head over to Patreon and give us some support. We are going to be revamping our rewards soon, so you're going to want to check that out. Also, most of you probably know this already, but we have a tabletop role-playing podcast that we've been doing for a while, and I want more listeners, damn it. It's very good, I promise. Okay, anyway, that's all I have to say. Remember to say your prayers, eat your vitamins, don't sharpen your pencil while the teacher's talking. Okay, bye.